So another issue that I want to quickly touch on when it comes to politics is with um, the NLTP Act. Hmm. This is <laughs> another one of my favorite issues to keep bringing up. And uh, I think if uh, you know already that I'm one big promo- proponent of uh, lifting the act. I It's very interesting because um, 2013, let me just check, 2013 assembly, you're already an MLA Mm. Uh, parliamentary secretary at that time? No, I was just an MLA. MLA at that yeah. time, excuse me. To 2013 assembly at the zero hour discussion, you had you had brought this up, the the appeal to look into this act, uh, whether it's to remove it or whatever the case may be, but to look into the act. And uh, that led to a committee being formed on this issue. This was way back in 2013, mm. right? So... Um, few things I just want you to touch on when you talk about this issue is uh, that what prompted you back then in 2013 and uh, coming all the way up to the recent um, uh, just recently found out that uh, the committee that was formed was uh, formed back in 2018 mm-hmm. the current one that yeah. um, a lot of people are talking about because uh, it came out in the news recently where uh, the chief secretary is having, uh, heading a um, committee um, to look into like you know the modalities of the the NLTP Act and whether there is a, a reason for partial prohibition lifting, I think uh, is the is how they phrased it. So what is what prompted you back in 2013? What is your take on the current uh, you know the situation that we have? Which I think by somewhere in December they should be coming up with the report, uh, the, some answers you know their their answers on this, and also what uh, where do you think the future lies for this act? I don't know if you can, uh, how much of a personal or uh, professional, you know, uh, response you can give to this, but whatever you're, uh, you can freely talk about. First off, it's a very sensitive and, uh, of course, interesting topic. Yeah. And uh, it is, it, it has um, sort of challenged a lot of leadership Mm. and, you know, the society itself into thinking about the pros and cons of Mm. lifting the prohibition that exists. Right. If you look at our history, Mm. I always keep saying this, that we have democratic institutions in place, Mm. but do we have democratic processes in place? Mm. Because institutions would be put in place by governments. Mm. but processes will be put in place by people right so in a state like Nagaland if you look at the history of NLTP Act Mm. it was made in the assembly Mm. but it was driven uh, through a public process Mm. led by the Nagaland Baptist Church Council right and also the Naga Mothers Mothers Association. Association right but if I remember correctly the most vocal was the Nagaland Baptist Church Council Mm. So it was at that point of time uh, decided that uh, this is required to mm. put in place measures mm. against you know uh, various uh, excesses of drinking mm. and alcoholism. Mm. Uh, the narrative has changed over a period of years. Definitely. We know, and in, even in a Murung Express article in 2014, mm. I read that there are 500 illegal bars in Dimapur mm. alone. Mm. So if you look at that, first of first of all, illegal bars mean that they are selling liquor. Mm. Secondly, the fact that NLTP egg is in place mm. and uh, it is in direct uh, you know contradiction and contravention of that act. act yes. We are also wondering how it exists. Mm. It cannot exist without a certain nexus. Definitely. Then in today's time, uh, we also hear of. Uh, syndicates controlling, mm. you know, the uh, illegal trade, right? Of the black alcohol. business of alcohol, yes, yeah. the bootlegging. In 2013, mm. because I'm interested in policies for the state of Nagaland, mm. especially to ensure enable development, mm. I decided that I should raise this issue mm. in the assembly because it's of public importance. Mm. And my primary interest was I represent a constituency which shares. A long constituency with uh, a long border with Assam, Assam right. and all the liquor comes from there. Mm. So uh, even if there is prohibition, mm. you know there is uh, a problem of our citizens drinking a lot of spurious liquor. Mm. 
So a lot of my supporters who come to me for, you know, uh, help mm. for their health issues mm. and treatment in the hospital mm. um, are primarily uh, people who have been affected by drinking. Spirit yes, consumption of, consumption of spirit. 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 So what happens is uh, the uh, cost of treatment is very high mm. at the end of the day. And they'll usually go to the hospitals when uh, all hope is lost. Mm. Or at the late, last, last stages, uh, last right. and late stage. Mm. So mm. It, it's sad, mm. disheartening, but it was a reality that uh, forced me to you know, mm. raise that issue. That if we are to have prohibition in place, mm. what regulations should we add more to the NLTB Act to mm. ensure that we don't drink spurious liquor? Mm. Because, you know, you cannot stop, uh, you know, the, the right of an individual to drink. Right. right. We are anyway uh, uh, having access to local brews. Mm, mm. So, uh, of course, it may not be as devastating as, as the, the, you yes, know, the spurious other. liquor. Mm. But there is still a flow of alcohol in the state. Mm. It's a fact. Definitely. It's yes. a fact. You know, I, I must acknowledge mm. You know, just because of propriety of protocol of uh, being politically correct, I cannot say that there are no, mm. there is no flow of liquor in the state. Mm. There is. Mm. So we must acknowledge that truth. Mm. Unless we do that, we will not be able to discuss mm. our reality. So I felt that by raising that issue in the assembly, mm. the government should review, should review the NLTP Act mm. to ensure what works best for us mm. and what works best for uh people who love alcohol mm. and there is a fair share of that yeah. in the state. Mm. So, you know, when I raised that issue, there was a debate mm. I um, on health grounds, on revenue grounds, mm. you know, before uh, prohibition, NLTP egg was put in place, mm. Nagaland was earning around 60 crore per annum. Mm. This was like long time back yeah, long and 60 time. crore must have been huge. Mm. And after that, it was reduced to 10 lakhs. Mm. So if you look at the revenue uh, uh, aspect, aspect of it of also, it, yes, you know, yes. it's very important. Mm. So, you know, a lot of revenue issues forces us to go to Delhi in search of funding. Mm. And we are not able to stand up on our own feet. Mm. Our economy is not able to, um, you know, thrive because of issues with regards you know, revenue. Mm. Economic reasons. Yes. Economic yeah. reasons. Yeah. And it impacts a lot of our policies. Mm. It definitely impacts uh, policies which uh, affects you in your daily life. Mm. Let me not elaborate on that. Mm. But when mm. it comes to prohibition, mm. I think we need to review. Mm. And I was, res and it was a very positive response. Our mm. Honorable Chief Minister said we'll have two committees, one mm. to look into the scientific and health aspect of uh, the impact of uh, NLTP Act. Mm. The other was also to look at the legal aspects of it. Mm. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, he mm. went to Delhi as a Lok Sabha MP right, right. and uh, the matter died, died there. Oh. Mm. This uh, term in 2018 later part, this mm. issue uh, was conveniently addressed mm. by the formation of the committee which you took, uh, talked about. Right, so right. this committee is headed by the Chief Secretary. Mm. All Comparisons with other states who have prohibition mm. have been done. They okay. have done a lot of technical studies. It took a lot of uh, time. Yeah, I'm but sure. due to yes. pandemic, I think it has been postponed. Mm. The last and the most important part of it is, you know, for the government to ensure that uh, good governance is in place, mm. we actively seek the opinion of our stakeholders, mm. that is our citizens. Right. And therefore, that part is remaining. Mm. So when the study is uh, actually you know Complete. compiled mm. and uh, we are ready mm. by maybe next year because the f festive season has started today, <laughs> people are no more Ironic. to discuss. <laughs> Ironically, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you know, next year perhaps uh, there will be a series of consultations. Mm. But personally, mm. I feel that uh, you know we are. Mm, we, we use two, three arguments. Mm. One is uh, like Bihar, mm. how alcoholism impacts the citizen, citizenry. Right. Right. The other is uh, um, as Christians, mm. we have a different argument mm. on alcohol and liquor. Mm. So when, you know, it was part of the, you know, the, the direct uh, directive policy of the constitution mm. to encourage prohibition. Mm. 
Mm. But uh, only few states still have prohibition, mm. and uh, three of that, three of those states are in notice. Mm. So we see now that unless we review this policy, mm. one we will not be ab- able to actively address the issue of uh, alcoholism leading to health issues. Mm. You know, mm. and and uh, there are models in different states where. Prohibition has been lifted, mm. but alcoholism have not gone up. Mm. Yes. So those yes. data are available, mm. and then there are a lot of uh, uh, revenue which can help our education and health sector. Mm. Sometimes in a pandemic like this, mm. we are running around for re- uh, some financial aid. Mm. Mm. We got a lot of help from the center thanks mm. to our prime minister. But right. if we had our own revenue, our own funds, yes, own funds, mm. so we would have addressed this issue. Mm. Uh, properly and in a timely manner. Mm. So it, the implication is huge. Mm. Definitely, uh, the implication is huge, and and definitely, I feel that as a Christian, we should mm. also look to how, uh, you know, uh, the Baptist part of Southern America mm. address prohibition. Mm. There is no prohibition in exactly. the U.S. Exactly. Okay. So I I I like the way you. Uh, Touched on each aspects because I'm not gonna uh, bore the audience again with my thing. But I've said this in the past many times. There is definitely financial implications. The amount of uh, um, the amount of money that we could possibly be earning, the state mm. government could be earning from its revenue from uh, taxes or how, whatever it may be. The issue of the health factor that uh, even if you ban alcohol, the people who want to drink are still gonna find a way to drink. You're only forcing them to now drink spurious liquor. Mm. So health factor is there. And uh, the fact that, again, a mighty country like U.S. failed to implement the prohibition properly mm. and they accepted that this was not the way to go. And like you just right now mentioned how the Baptists there also, the ones who brought Christianity to mm. us in the first place anyway, have uh, been living with uh, no prohibition in place for the longest time now. So I do feel, um, I think it's next month that they will be coming up with a report, right? So I'm very keenly interested in hearing what they have to say. And Hopefully, yeah. uh, it might take some time yeah, because yeah. it's a sensitive subject. Right, right. And in uh, Nagaland, because the government is focused on good governance mm. and uh, we want to take along all the stakeholders with us, mm. uh, it takes a little time mm. for people to... I'm sure. Uh, you know, come to a mm. consensus on yes. any issue. Yes, I'm. I'm just happy that uh, I'm happy to very happy to find out that you addressed this issue way back in 2013, uh, and that the, a committee has been in place since 2018. But because of the pandemic, it's taking time. But the fact that this conversation is happening, regardless of what happens in the future, whether the NLTP Act stays in place or not, I appreciate that you know these things are in motion and people are talking. And I think uh, for us to progress. We need to have conversation, and uh, like you said, um, I should also appreciate that a mm. lot of young preachers are mm. coming up with uh, you know very uh, in- interesting, intelligent response to this issue. Mm. Mm. Uh, the church is uh, silent on this for now, mm. but we want to cher- we want to cherish to address this mm. whether policy. Mm and active regulation works mm. in the matter of uh, you know alcoholism right and uh, leading to further discussion and debate on prohibition mm. i think naga society has been flooded with uh, opinions on prohibition mm. it is time that the church also responds mm. with their opinions on prohibition right right because uh, we are all part of the church mm. Mm. yes we are one big family so it, uh, the elephant in the room has to be addressed, basically. Exactly. It has to be, yeah.